Okay, so uh, we are, uh, we already have um, in the back in the ILI unit, we have the central line kits back in this corner here, um, and then we have the procedure prep kits in case you're needing to put a central line or do an invasive procedure on somebody. The new thing um, for today and going forward is that we have these pre-oxygenation kits. Specifically, pre-oxygenation is gonna be for any patient who needs a non-rebreather level of oxygen. We're trying to do away with non-rebreathers, uh, and we are presuming that those patients very likely will need to be intubated. The problem with a non-rebreather is that when the patient exhales, some of their breath is gonna be going into the room and potentially exposing staff. We can put a surgical mask over the top of a non-rebreather if someone comes in on one from EMS, but that's probably not gonna be a perfect solution for trying to limit exposure to staff. So what we're trying to accomplish with this is have the patient be breathing on a closed circuit so that any of their exhaled breath is going through a viral filter before entering the room. So if you have a patient um, who, who needs uh, a non-rebreather level of oxygen, you're gonna grab one of these pre-oxygenation kits. You will also need to grab a BiPAP mask. The reason why these are not, the BiPAP masks are not in the pre-oxygenation kit is because there will be different sizes of patients. For now, we just have mediums, um, but respiratory is also gonna bring down larges. So we're keeping those separate from the pre-oxygenation kits, but you will need a mask um, to go into the room with to put on your patient. We are not using these masks for BiPAP, but they're non-vented masks so that they won't be aerosolizing contents into the room when you're putting uh, uh, a person on this. Um, and then you'll also wanna grab the uh, glide scope as well, which is gonna have your standard glide scope supplies because again, we're anticipating that um, these patients will need to be intubated. You can probably leave that outside the room just to begin with when you first see the patient, but again, this should be taking the place of any patients needing a non-rebreather. Looking at the BiPAP mask, trying to figure out what size they are. It's right here, medium, large. So between the charge nurse desk and the uh, UC, B, the B side UC desk, um, that's gonna be the area where we keep the BiPAP masks and the pre-ox kits on the main side. Because like we've mentioned before, there probably will be a couple of patients who slip through the triage cracks and we're concerned about ILI who go to the main side who end up needing to be intubated or oxygenated with non-rebreather level oxygen. Let's go. All right, so if you're in the room, you have your pre-oxygenation kit and you have your BiPAP mask. So you're gonna take your BiPAP mask out. I've already opened some of, the, some of this stuff, so there might be another layer of things that you need to go through when you're actually taking it out for the patient. So you have BiPAP mask. You have a regular stylet. One thing, uh, we are into, we're trying to intubate everybody with the old glide scope, uh, at least in the ILI unit, or any other type of video laryngoscopy over in the main, if, if you have a main patient with ILI. But I'm presuming that some docs will want to use a regular stylet, so we're including a regular stylet in every, every pre-ox kit. If you want to use the glide scope stylet, that will be on the glide scope also, okay? So you have your stylet. You have your BBM. You actually do not need the BVM mask for this because the BiPAP mask is going to be taking that place. You have a PEAT valve. So just for everybody who's coming closer just to show. Um, this is what a PEAT valve looks like if you haven't seen one before. Okay? PEAT valve. You have a viral filter. A lot, of you, a lot of you guys, especially me included until now, are not aware of what the viral filters look like. They look like this. So this is a little bit different than the MCRIT podcast video that we've been, that this is all based off of Scott Weingart stuff. These were yellow in his video, but they look like this for us. So viral filter. Um, that's gonna be all you need. Uh, no, sorry. We'll need a nasal cannula also, so that's in there as well. We have a couple of other things. That, that's gonna create the circuit for pre-oxygenating the patient, but they're presuming again that, that 90, 9% of these patients are gonna get intubated. Um, we have a couple of other things. We have the end tidal CO2 detector that you'll use after you intubate the patient. We have surgical lube, because you're obviously gonna to wanna to lube up your endotracheal tube. And then we have your 10 cc syringe, because that'll be for the, to put the cuff up. And then uh, some tape to, for when we secure the tube um, when the patient's intubated. So that's extra stuff. 
Um, the, understand that there are a couple of other things that you need when you intubate somebody. So endotracheal tubes, obviously you need an endotracheal tube, but that's going to vary based on the size of the patient. So you'll have to grab that separately. Um, uh, OG tubes, all that stuff. Uh, we're just trying to keep these kits for immediate, for pretty much immediately what you need for the for the patient who's potentially crashing. So you'll have to get the um, OG tube uh, separately, but that's fine because um, that can be delayed. And then um, also our other adjuncts like bougies and oral airways and all this other stuff, but you're not going to need that on every patient. So we're going to say just keep that in the airway box. Um, for now and keep that outside of the room. Do not bring the airway box in, but if you have anything that you might think you might need for rescue, um, just get that out of the airway box and leave it outside the room. All right, so um, first thing is you're gonna put the patient on a nasal cannula, okay? You're gonna put them on two, three, four liters, depending on how much, how, how kind of hard of a time they're having. That's gonna give you a little bit more CPAP than what we can get through the BiPAP mask. Then we're gonna put the BiPAP mask on. Again, these are non-vented BiPAP masks, so we're not expelling aerosolized contents into the room. Goes without saying that everybody should still be wearing an N95 at this point, um, or a PAPR or whatever, um, not just a straightforward surgical mask. But um, if you come closer, these uh, BiPAP masks have these little kind of vents on them here. Let's just make sure that these are closed, okay? If your RT thinks that the patient isn't tolerating BiPAP well because of um, because of these being closed and you really have to open them up, then I guess go ahead and do it. But for now, just to start off with, we're gonna to try to keep those closed. I'm gonna take your viral filter and one side and one side only should fit into the BiPAP mask adapter here. Then you're gonna take your BVM and your, and your peep valve. So I misspoke in the video a little bit here, so I'm gonna overdub here. This cap that comes on the BVM standard that you'll see me pointing to here, that needs to come off and be replaced with a peep valve, which you'll see me do next. What the peep valve does is when the patient takes a breath in, it causes them to get more of their air from the BVM, which is in turn hooked up to high flow oxygen, and get less of their air from the room. Uh, it can make it a little bit hard for the patient to get a good exhale uh, if you crank it up too high, so I would put this on the lowest setting, which is 5 to start off with. If you're having a hard time oxygenating the patient, but they don't seem to be having issues with exhaling, you can turn the peep up. So, got that connected there, and then we're going to connect this to the bottom side of the viral filter. We are not squeezing the BVM. Sorry, I'm yanking Tennille's head around with this now. And then we're going to hook this up to the wall the other tree for oxygen and the nasal cannula oops. <laughs> the nasal cannula remember is going to be just on two three four maybe six at most but this should go up to flush rate so bring it up to 15 and then keep going until it until it stops turning or until you don't hear any excess oxygen coming in although these say 15 Although these say 15 at the top here, you can actually hear that I can continue to turn it. And you can get these, I, I'm not sure what exactly these go up to, but some of these at various hospitals will go up to 60. So we want this cranked all the way to the top. So, so this is our pre-oxygenation circuit. Again, taking, taking the place of anybody who needs a non rebreather um, And again, to give credit where credit is due, this is Scott Weingart's idea from the MCRIT podcast but it's just our adapted version to, to it because we have a couple of differences in, in our equipment.